complete your reading. So this is going to be your geoscope for the new moon in Cancer, which happens on the 20th of July, 2020. So I guess um, the important thing to say is that um, we are now moving out of that lunar eclipse energy, that Capricorn lunar eclipse energy that was quite heavy for a lot of people. And we're now moving towards the second new moon in Cancer since the, the, the solstice um, new moon that we had that was a solar eclipse in, in June. Um, so essentially, this particular new moon is going to be in the, the last degrees of, of Cancer. So the solstice solar eclipse was in the, the early degrees and this, is, and this is the late degrees. So there is an element here of twinning again. There is um, a theme of mirroring and, um, and also of kind of duality, polarity, trying to balance opposites. Now, I know that that is generally speaking um, a theme that we tend to get at full moons. But the interesting thing about this particular new moon is that we're going to have um, an opposition between the new moon in Cancer and then Saturn in Capricorn. So that Saturn energy is going to kind of continue from the lunar eclipse into this particular lunar cycle. So don't be surprised if what you see is at the start of the lunar cycle, um, still the residue, some stuff to kind of work through and release from the lunar eclipse. And then um, as the month progresses, um, so the, the sort of fresh starts and the new um, kind of beginnings begin to ma manifest or make themselves evident. So that's, that, that's what I've seen in all the readings so far. But anyway, let's get into... Um, your reading and see what comes out. So what wisdom, guidance, clarity and messages of healing do you have for Scorpio for the new moon in Cancer? And while I'm shuffling, I should also just mention that um, if you've been, if your interest has been piqued by these readings and you are keen to learn more about geomancy, perhaps try them for yourself. I have actually just finished um, producing an ebook that has um, everything you need to know about practicing geomancy. So it's a lovely practical guide. It's an EPUB format, so it should fit with most devices. And you can find details below in the description box. shuffle okay let's see what's going on for Scorpio hopefully a bit cheerier than last month yes <laughs> what did I say that is so funny okay so your first uh, geomantic figure out is Laetitia now Laetitia is about joy it's about expansion it's about flow it's about grace so it's the great benefit Jupiter in Pisces which is wonderful kind of um, almost blessings from heaven kind of energy. It's very uplifting and this is about expansion in your heart chakra. It's also about expansion in your, your emotional body. Um, so you are definitely, as we move into this new moon phase, you're definitely keen on kind of getting your happy back. That's where your focus is. Interesting. So fourth house, which is roots, family and home. Um, this is conjuncture, so this is Mercury in Virgo, and this is about a coming together or joining together of forces. Um, and given that we've got family here, possibly it's a family reunion, maybe members of your family um, you've been separated from due to distance or because of um, quarantine restrictions. But I feel as though there's some kind of reunion happening for you here, um, you know, when it comes to roots and family. Um, we'll dive in more sort of uh, once we get more details. Okay, so seventh house, things are also kind of looking up. So um, this, unlike last time, I think you had a Missio here, which was kind of about loss and separation and breakups. So here we've got Fortuna Minor, which is um, probably the second or the third best uh, geomantic figure in the deck. So this is the sun in Leo, and this is about um, fortune in the sense of um, very often support from others, um, good feeling, serendipitous events, help and protection from spirit. Um, so it's not always necessarily that kind of physical evidence of success. It's more about a feeling of abundance and gratitude um, in relationships. So this is seventh house, which is one-to-one -one relationships significant to others, 
usually it is committed partnerships or people that are very important in our lives, what, you know, our kind of important, significant one-to-one -one relationships. And this can extend to business partners as well. So I do feel as though there's some really more, much more positive energy coming in here. And it might be um, kind of, it, it might be relevant that the moon moves into Leo. I mean, the sun moves into Leo about two days after this, this new moon. So, you know, the new moon energy starts on the 20th, but then, um, you know, it continues throughout the lunar month, so until the following new moon. So don't just see this reading, in, you know, as kind of related only to the two or two and a half days in which the sun and the moon are in Cancer. This really pertains to the beginning of a new lunar cycle, so it lasts from, you know, one new moon to another. So approximately uh, four weeks. Um, so yes, things are definitely looking up when it, when it, when it comes to um, to one to one to relationships. And Leo season may be significant. This could be when you start to see improvements in relationships, um, you know, more markedly. Interesting. So we've got a mirroring happening. What did I say about mirroring? Um, so we've, we've got the same dramatic figure conjuncture in both your fourth and your tenth house. So this is really about kind of coming into some kind of alignment um, between work and career and, and home life. So there's this balance now between the private and the public, I mean, yes, the private and the public spheres, between work life and home life, um, and between, um, you know, what you kind of, your future and your past, because of course, fourth house is roots and the 10th house is where we're headed, you know, this is sort of signpost into the future. So um, that's really interesting. There's this definite sense of kind of a lining up. Um, really, really interesting, Scorpio. Anyway, I'm going to pause for a second while I do your ge geomantic figures, and then we can dive more deeply into what all this means. Hi, Scorpio. Welcome back. Um, so as you can see, I remembered to light the uh, fire element here in the corner, the candle, and I've done all the conversions, so we can now proceed with your reading. Um, so the first thing to start with is probably where the new moon and so on is going to be. So um, this new moon will happen in Cancer, which for you ha is kind of eighth, I mean ninth house. So this is the house of dreams. It's the house of spirituality. It's the house of foreign travel or connections, publishing, as well as um, higher education. So this is kind of philosophy, wisdom, that kind of thing. So the sun and the moon will be in um, the ninth um, for you um, and um, basically I think what this means is that there's a fresh start for you happening when it comes to all those types of issues. Um, now interesting that we've got Pu'er here which is Mars in Aries and of course Aries is the first sign of the zodiac and Mars is kind of associated with new beginnings so this is quite apt I think for a geomantic figure. There's definitely a feeling here of enthusiasm, of beginner's luck, of wanting to kind of forge ahead, of feeling you know, hopeful about things, wanting to take action, make things happen, and so on. So that's really good. Um, then this energy, however, has to be balanced by the, um, by the, well, there's going to be an opposition between the Sun and the Moon in Cancer and Saturn in Capricorn. So Saturn will be in Capricorn, which for you, it falls in the third house. So um, interesting here that we've got Calder Draconis, which is the South Node, so this is about endings and karmic contracts kind of coming to a close, as well as soul lessons being integrated and released. Um, so as I said before we started, I felt that, you know, what Saturn has been doing over the last two moon phases is helping us to close out karmic situations that have maybe, you know, lessons that have been learned and that we can now release and move away from. But sometimes this can also mean balancing in the sense that if we are if we owe somebody something you know this is the time when payment kind of comes due and um, given that we've got Saturn in your third house here which is the house of kind of self-expression communication um, as well as our immediate family so this is siblings and cousins that type of thing as well as people in our immediate environment so these could be um, you know people that we encounter on our commute to work that we see on the bus every day. This could be our neighbors, um, shopkeepers, postmen, that type of thing. Um, but there's some kind of cycle, some kind of karmic contract or situation that is coming to an end here. It can also be short trips and vehicles. So maybe you decide that you want to sort of sell your car or your motorbike or whatever the case may be. 
Um, maybe you think it's, it's sort of time to upgrade to something more environmentally friendly. That's one way this energy could work. But uh, I think given that we've got this, this third and with this ninth um, connection, I think it's more to do with shifts in your um, your ideas and beliefs um, and a kind of a balancing between learned experience and wisdom gained, sometimes through pain and suffering, and then um, facts and what we see in the media, um, you know, information that comes to us through communications with others or through seeing stuff, you know, in newspapers or etc. Um, that there is this kind of um, sense of learning to trust your intuition more. So kind of going more with spiritual guidance and wisdom gained through experience than making decisions based on um, logical facts or just the sort of the bare data, the sort of raw data as it were, or how things appear on the surface. So that's another way to kind of put put this um, kind of energy. So I think really learning to, to trust yourself in when it comes to making decisions. I think that's one of the things that's going to come out of this particular new moon. Um, then the other thing to say about this, um, this new moon is that um, about a week afterwards, we have some two very important Neptune aspects happening. So the first is a square between Neptune and Venus. So this is the third square that we've had in this trio since May. So we had one in May, we had one in June when Venus was retrograde, and now we're having the final one, which will close out the cycle. Um, and that's around about the 27th or so of July. So this, um, this I think, is going to kind of emphasize that um, confu any confusion that we might have had over the last few months when it comes to value, self-worth, money, um, as well as um, relationships. Now, for you, Gemini um, falls in your eighth house, so this this, this concerns um, shared resources or shared income or shared emotional experiences with significant others. So this is the house of sex, death, taxes, uh, loans, um, inheritances, as well as intangible things like trust, intimacy, um, that kind of thing. So here we've got a Quisitio, which is Jupiter in Sagittarius, and that is really positive energy. So even though this is quite a challenging aspect, which centers around things like deception, self-deception, um, kind of telling fantasy from reality, um, being realistic when it comes to um, money, love, that kind of creativity. Um, it you know it looks as though it is potentially you've kind of worked through these issues and now it's simply an integration of the lessons that you've already learned so that you kind of you do better. You know better and so you now do better and this leads to better outcomes. Because Acquisitio is about gain. So I do see gain coming from partnering up with somebody. And it's interesting that we've got Fortuna Minor here in your seventh house. Often the seventh and the eighth houses are linked. The seventh house is partnerships and the eighth is the resources that we share with those partners. So um, it is usually kind of, um, you know, th th there's a link. So it could be that you are entering into a very profitable or fruitful uh, work partnership um, as a result of the new energy coming in with this, with this new moon. Because we've got the sense here of feeling fortunate in terms of the people that are surrounding you, um, in terms of support from higher ups, from the universe, etc. Um, and serendipitous meetings, etc. And here we have Acquisitio, which is about gain in your eighth house. So it does look as though, you know, if you're thinking about partnering up with somebody, which could well be the case given that you've got Conjunctio both in your tenth house and your fourth house, you know, so you could be going into business with a family member, for example, um, or you could you could um, simply be deciding to join forces with somebody when it comes to work and, you know, um, career projects, um, it does look very profitable. Um, so that's that's really good. Now the other aspect that um, happens with Neptune involves the other benefits. So this is Jupiter. Jupiter will be making a sextile to Neptune. And it's interesting, I mean, both Jupiter and Venus will be making these aspects to Neptune on the same day. Now for you, um, Neptune falls, I think, in your fifth house. Um, let me just double check yes fifth house so neptune will be in your fifth house and this is the house of children creativity hobbies
passion so it can be new lovers as well um, and here we've got Kaput Chaconis, which is a new cycle starting so a new karmic contract starting now of course this could be um, interpreted in a number of ways it could be for example conception you know maybe if you've been trying to fall pregnant that you actually conceive during this particular lunar cycle because we've got this new potentially new karmic um, soul contracts coming in um, and you know this is a house of children and birth so it could well be that you conceive that's one way this energy could work another way is that you um, you partner up, up with somebody over a creative project or it could be that you are entering a new business venture of some kind that involves collaboration with others and this involves children so it could be something potentially educational which may also be why we've got this third and ninth house axis which is all about um, knowledge and wisdom and about this is kind of primary education and this this is usually um, vocational or kind of tertiary education so this tends to be school this ten tends to be the type of education that we embark in after school um, so that's really interesting um, but definitely a new a new cycle starting it could also be a new lover coming in um, we do have rebeus here which can often be about passion although this can also be about passion projects so you can read it one of two ways and both of those are fifth house um, issues this is about joy and passion um, so definitely new cycle starting for you here um, possibly activated by that Jupiter Neptune sextile which is a very positive stimulating aspect now Jupiter will be in the same um, sign as, as Saturn so here in your third house so um, it, it, you know that's also something to bear in mind that even though you've got this 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 karmic connection here with Saturn and the south node you also have Jupiter here which is expanding your third house so expanding um, your communications with others which could lead to sort of new opportunities or meeting new people um, and it could be for example that um, if, if this is a new lover coming in that you could meet them in your immediate environment you know so on the way to work or at the local shops or um, something of that ilk but not necessarily um, it could also just be a message coming in from somebody new um, so that's really positive the other thing to say is that around about the same time we are, will have the opening of the, the 888 portal so this is uh, Syrian energy and this is all about um, transformation you know the number 8 is about transformation which is something you know a lot about Scorpio um, so this is about kind of death and rebirth it's about reinvention it's about transformation transmutation of energy and I really feel that this is really what this um, this particular new moon phase is all about it's about transmuting so it's a moving of out of that energy of the lunar eclipse and moving into the new energy of the solar eclipse this is I feel a very transitional or liminal um, lunar phase that um, is going to take us out of the old energy that we've been in for the last 18 months to two and a half years and moving us into that six month cycle more fully that the solar eclipse kind of got started back in June so um, all in all very positive um, if we look at your outcome cards we've got passion joy and happiness and then we've got this fortuna minor sort of emphasized so i do feel as though one of the big themes here is going to be your relationships to other people that from this is going to come both joy and expansion and enthusiasm kind of a new lust for life a new passion for life which i felt that you kind of um lost momentarily during the lunar eclipse i feel like there was a, a return to some very difficult energy maybe sort of a processing of grief and loss from the last two and a half years or so um and then there's this rubeus energy which you will feel quite familiar with because it is mars and scorpio so it is your sign actually and rubeus can work in one of two ways it's passion but this can be obsession on one hand so it can be a little bit negative where we get stuck in these sort of loops of energy where we get too fixated on something and we can't kind of move past it or it can be the it's sort of igniting of passion in the sense of um, you know perhaps somebody firing us up or a new creative project you know getting that zest for life back so um, you know I think see see what happens over the next um, lunar phase but you know my feeling is looking at your cards that we don't really have too much that's negative here the only thing vaguely negative is omissio which we had a lot last in your last reading 
which is that energy of separation, breakup, something just being out of reach or unattainable, self-sabotage, uh, loss financially. And here we do have that in the sense of work and income. So um, it's possible that, you, you know, you are moving away from, I think this kind of reiterates some of the stuff that came up in your solo eclipse reading, actually, where you are possibly changing careers because there's this, this kind of um, loss of income through your usual patterns of work. But then there does seem to be this incoming energy of t teaming up collaborations with others that will kind of push your career forward, um, a sense of help from, t you know, from joint ventures, success and abundance coming from working together with other people. Um, and generally this much, much happier energy. I mean, we've got Laetitia here in your first half, you've got Acquisitio in your 12th, which is um, mirroring your eight. So this is definite sense of an upsurge in your energy of feeling more positive, feeling more optimistic. And as we know, that is really the key to, to manifesting abundance is, um, you know, that shift in vibration, um, that joy, cultivating joy and happiness within your emotional body, which then raises your vibration and allows you to draw in um, that abundance. So um, a really, really positive reading. And I'm so pleased for you, Scorpio, because the last reading was really quite heavy. Um, so yes, do let me know how this resonates um, in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this reading, do hit the like button. And um, before I leave you, um, also just to say that um, if you're interested in um, that ebook uh, that I've done on on practicing geomancy, then do check out the link in the description box. But anyway, all the best for this um, upcoming new moon, and I'll catch you again in a couple of weeks for for my next forecast.